Hi, this is Brian Klein with Thunderhead Engineering. Uh, I'd like to give you a short demonstration here that uh, demonstrates the difference between shortest path and locally quickest in Pathfinder 2013. Um, these concepts of shortest path and locally quickest are described in the user's guides and technical manual, but I'd like to just show you a very visual example of the difference between these two options um, and give you some tips on maybe how to uh, balance uh, pedestrian movement a little bit better through openings and, and restrictions in your in your simulation. So what we have here, we have two occupant groups. They have the exact same population uh, count, density, uh, profiles, everything from one side to the other. This is just a duplication. Um, the geometry here is a short corridor that turns to go through some, or in this case, turnstiles or uh, some kind of a flow restriction here around the corner to a final exit. So the agents are moving down the corridor, through here, and up. The model on the left will show, uh, will demonstrate a shortest path uh, solution. So every agent will be trying to f follow the shortest path to the exit um, through this restriction and while avoiding collisions with each other and uh, uh, as they navigate the, the walking surface. On the right, um, I've taken this narrow area here through these turnstiles and I've used the thin wall tool to make a cut and then I've made a door that uh, across this opening so that there are four doors uh, in these gaps for the turnstiles. One of the new features in 2013 is you can actually add now a flow restriction to a door in steering mode so you could use these as a turnstile that has some flow rate so many people per minute can pass through it uh, on their way to the exit. In this case, there's no flow restriction. These are just open doors that people can move through as, as, at their maximum speed. Um, but what this offers the agents that this model does not is it offers agents a choice through these gaps. They see four doors, and as they evaluate the queue at each door, they will try to take the queue, which gets them through this restriction and out of this room in the shortest amount of time. Um, these agents will be trying to maintain the shortest path while avoiding collisions. Uh, so you'll see a difference here as we begin to run the simulation. So let's start here, and we see agents navigating. And as soon as they come around the corner, you'll see start to see a difference. The model on the right, agents are starting to uh, navigate to the different door options, and you see these two lower doors being used by agents, um, whereas in this model, the agents are really kind of almost fighting one another to try to stay on their shortest path. Some will repath once they uh, have a little bit of a conflict here, like we should see them repath and make their way through, but they're all really trying to stay. They, there's a high preference to stay on their shortest path here, um, whereas on this side, the preference is shortest time, so they're all trying to find the queue that's the shortest and get themselves out of this room um, through the door that offers them the shortest time. So we'll let, let this go to the end here, and we will see um, so the last agent's out of the right side in about 56 seconds, and we'll continue. I'll fast forward just a bit in time and get them. Okay, and then 78 seconds. So there's, you know, a fairly decent difference in the overall evacuation time, uh, depending on how the agents are able to utilize these extra doorways here, and if they're allowed, if they're given a choice between shortest path, uh, this offers shortest path and locally quickest, or the shortest amount of time to exit the room through the available doors. This design only offers agents the shortest path route. There's they can't really see these other pathways and evaluate how many people are moving through them without a doorway to sort of reference against. So this is just a brief example, something to think about when you're making your simulations. If you have areas that are restricting and you have large crowds building up and they're not taking alternative exits or alternative routes around those obstructions, you may look for a way to drop a thin wall in and put a door the full width of that. Um, opening that gives an agent another option uh, that they can evaluate as they're trying to exit from one room to another. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please email us at support at thunderheadeng.com. Thank you.